Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So today I'm going to talk about frosted jugs, but this is in relation to a process that was um, created by Richardson's of Stourbridge, I think in about 1851, and, um, and was fashionable for about 20 years. Now people carry on using that process later on, but it was that fashionable time that I'm looking at. And uh, yeah, the jugs that I'm going to show you reflect that time period. Um, it's kind of, when I talk about frosted, it looks like this kind of thing. So um, what I'll do is I'll just put this off, point the camera down a bit, and we'll have, have a look at some jugs and have a play. I'm not going to be big on references because most of this stuff is not in any reference books that I know of. I've got one piece that is, and I'll show you a reference for that and it does fit in with the date time periods that I'm talking about. I've got a couple of um, cream or milk jugs. I think this one's more like a milk jug. Apparently if it's too big to be a cream jug, it's a milk jug. This is a bit like a very big cream jug. So let's have a look at this one first because the frosting is less obvious on this one. So what they've done is they've frosted a lot of it. This part, can you see here? And then they've cut away so it's almost like, like in Taglia or something. So they frosted the surface and then cut away. So you've got clear bits, little panels. Yeah. And um, the handle on this is top to bottom. It's also got a little thumb bit here. This usually tells you it's probably closer to 1850 than it is to 1870. Um, during the 1870s, they transitioned to jugs being made with the hands made from the bottom to the top. All the ones I have are top to bottom, which kind of tells you, yeah, I'm in the right time frame. It's also got a frosted base as well. Can you see? So they've actually frosted the base because that's not wear and tear. That is frosting. And then they've cut the star into it. And I'll show you this other one, which is more frosted and less cutting same handle this one i think is a bit later it doesn't have a little thumb bit there it does have a bit of cutting along the top here and a bit here as well at the bottom and um yeah, it has this style flat panels so this is probably 1860s or something like that so that's the first two drugs i'm gonna show you so this jug is probably for ale because this kind of ware was built for, or made, built, um, was made for pubs and inns and hotels and that kind of thing. And um, you've still got the same top to bottom handle. Um, the ribs, so they are, however they did it, they applied the acid that makes this like paint in the gaps between the ribs. You can see it's got polished out underneath polished pontal um, yeah and again this feels with this edge here it tells you that it's more likely to be closer to 1850 than 1870 because this is more of that kind of thing so yeah this is I've never seen another one of these I rarely ever see these as rib jugs because this handle, the way it's made is more vulnerable. So this style of handle is, makes jugs rarer. Once they started doing these types of handles, they break more easily. This one, for this kind of handle, this one is more robust than a lot of the others that I've seen, which kind of tells me, yeah, it is more of a uh, pubware type thing. So here we are with another one. Yeah, this one feels early as well. It's got a thumbprint bit there. It's got a little janky bit there, and um, yeah, these these are, remind me of um, these discs here. They remind me of Japanese mon, which is like Japanese coats of arms. Um, it's got a neck ring that looks like it's applied as well, so that's an interesting feature. And they've actually put the acid over the top of it, and you can actually see the edge of the process just there quite clearly. So this was done after the handle was applied. And then you've got cutting. And also it was done on the base, but they've 
just polished out the pond as one piece. So this is a probably a, a more expensive thing than this, where the only cutting is actually the, the hole in the, the pond in the bottom, which is smaller. Um, this has got cut rim, cut here, cut the, the sides of the handles are cut. So these are the kind of things you look for. Tells you whether something's a better quality thing or not. Generally, the more of that. And people used to buy these things. So you, you might have been able to buy this as a completely plain, just acid etched one, and then the cutting was more and more money. That's how they used to do things, not in all cases, but quite often you'd see that kind of thing going on. So yeah, this is, I've got one, one more big one to show you. So this one has got actually a problem with it now. This is got some wacky cutting, look at that on the front there. Interesting, it's got no pouring lip now. I don't think it ever had a proper pouring lip as we see it, but someone has just cut the rim there. So I suspect this flared up a little bit here and here, and then it must have got a chip and they've polished it off. Well, I'm gonna, and it's just from there and there. So I don't think it went very high. If it did, it might have come to a little point like you see on some jugs. Um, yeah, and it's got similar kind of mon shaped things, not as enclosed as the other ones we're looking at. And it's got a star cut base. So yeah, this is a quality item because look at that, nice star cut base. And, um, but the handle is completely uncut apart from the very base here to tidy it up. And, um, and also this is more delicate than, than the others because the top of the handle, so it's attached to the top and put to the bottom, the top of the handle is literally just attached to the rim of, of the jug. So yeah, this is, it, if it hadn't been damaged, yeah, this would be kind of rarer because it's a more delicate thing um, and probably not really built to last in a way. Yes and no, if you know what I mean. Um, I'm gonna take, take this to leverages and try and get this, this edge fixed because they've just cut it flat and I would like it a little rounder. So it's a bit less obvious. Because I have another jug which has this type of rim. So this is not an unknown thing. Um, so it might have just, be, it might be barely any rise here at all, but it was chipped and they just wanted to level it to make it, you know, look perfect. And I'll try and make it look a bit more perfect than it already is. So I have one more to show you. So this is the last one I'm showing you. I think this is a cream jug. And um, yeah, so I have a reference for this because this is pressed glass. It's not your, and, um, and it's Percival and Yates from 1865. What looks like the cutting is not cutting, it's pressed. But this is early pressed glass, uh, for the UK it is anyway, and the handle is applied separately. So, um, and this shape here would have been so they would have, um, it wouldn't have been like this. Originally been more open. They've kind of like squeezed it into shape and made this shape here after they've made, you know, press the whole base out. So, yeah. Let me show you, see if we can get this close again so you can see this. And um, the base is pressed as well. So this star cut here is not cut, it's just molded. But as with a lot of early press glass, they've polished um, the bottom. So there's more in the very early press glass, there's more post pressing at working. So yeah, they've squeezed it up, made this form this shape here, added this handle, and then polished the base off. So they haven't quite got the idea that this is super cheap and throw away. Um, it's got a little good edge. It's very, 
but the handle here is, is a piggy handle which means there's a bit of a throwback to earlier in the century but as I've said when you're looking at cheaper press glass quite often the, the styles are reflecting what was fashionable a bit before um, and yeah so that's what that is I mean you compare it to let me just show you that and yeah so this is a similar period and you go yeah that's just plain and that's like an old fashioned old school in fact I said this was going to be the last but I think I'm going to show you something after I've shown you the reference so this book is The Identification of English Press Glass by Jenny Thompson and here is the little jug I was showing you in fact here it is look I'll pull it out with the same handle you can see there there so it's got a registered number 183353 and that is that one here so it was registered um, on the 18th of January 1865 and and it's got two numbers uh, 52 and 53 and so there's a sugar bowl and a creamer so yeah I'm still looking for the sugar bowl um, but 18th of January 1865 you don't get any more precise than that it doesn't tell you if it's in the morning or the afternoon I was literally about to put this book away and I spotted something this here this pattern so this is from 1868 and you have to remember this is the press glass people they're not quite up with the times because they're making you know people of high fashion get something first but you got these circles with the leaves in here like this and if I can pick up the other one like this so you see where they're coming from with this 1868 those other jugs I think will be earlier um, but that shows you that that iconography or whatever you want to call it was um, popular around that time so I did pop down the shed sorry there's a bit of dust in the bottom of this anyway so this is from a similar period to the other jugs so you've got the top to bottom handle and everything sort of aesthetic movement like the others are a bit um, but it has a different look about it but you might mistake this for etching I mean for in, yeah etching but this is actually engraving when you look at it very carefully um, it's difficult to actually I'm not even sure I can show you but you when you look at it very carefully in fact when you feel it you can feel that it's actually this matte surface is actually cut into the glass they've actually used a, a rough wheel to polish these well, not polish them out but rough these this pattern out so this is all hand done as opposed to this being just painted acid um, that's ripped the surface off the glass this is all engraved on a wheel so you need to and sometimes you'll see bigger patches than just this little thin one I was debating whether I was going to bring a different jug I stuck with this one in the end um, yeah and the other one which also looks like it's acid edge is actually engraved but it's still from the same period so they're still trying to keep that that acid edge look that, that that was new you know new tableware feature So I was about to go and um, pack up and then as I was taking something away I spotted this I completely missed it this is one of my um, I think it's my probably my smartest um, frosted jug and um, yeah it's I think this is a water jug and it, and it is smarter than the others I suspect the cutting is finer um, so I think this would be more expensive. It's got a little polished bit there, not a little bit of polished there, but it's the cutting on the body. Look at this. So you've got these curved cuts running through, and then you've got these edges cut into them. See how that goes together. 
That is super smart. It's almost like a modern design, but obviously it's an old jug. But yeah, it doesn't get much smarter than that. The base is polished in acid etched as well, and then cut out. But it's a super elegant little jug. And um, yeah, it's one of my favorite ones of these jugs. Uh, actually, I think, yeah, look, I'm just looking at what I've got in front of me and it is my favorite one. Um, yeah, it's mine. And um, yeah, and I think about half of these have come off eBay. So I think this one did. Um, there was another one, but someone sent it to me in a jiffy bag and that didn't survive. It happens, you know, you buy it, it was three pounds and, um, and I think they were charging me like about six or seven pounds to post it and they posted it in a jiffy bag. Crazy, but um, yeah, this, and yeah, this is, I think this is probably the 1860s. It is smarter than the others, it's got this lovely, you know, the, really the sort of like chickity tops up here like this. That's really a hangover from the Regency period. This is smooth and aesthetic and, lovely so yeah there you go so i hope you enjoyed that um i do enjoy doing these kind of videos because it gets me a chance to pull things that are, go together off the shelves and have a little play with them um that's what it's all about you know enjoying your stuff anyway um so the book reference i use will be in the description below uh, please remember to like and subscribe. There will be more videos on frosted glass. Um, so stay awake for those. And um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Have a good night. Good night.